Hello and welcome to the Hills Church Online. Uh, we're missing you. We're missing everyone meeting together physically, but it's so great to be able to connect online. And uh, if you've joined us before, it's great to see you again. If you're here for the first time, we love having you with us and thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Um, we've, we, we love the fact that people are sending in their prayer requests over these last couple of weeks. And we've got, we've got people in the church at the moment that are experiencing loss of family members, people that are, are, are experiencing financial difficulty, people that are um, worried about their jobs and stuff. And we just want to take a moment to pray for any prayer requests. If you might have a prayer request, we'd love to hear about it so that we can be praying for you. But let's just pray together. Um, for, for all those needs that we know and all those needs that we don't know. So Father God, we just thank you that in the midst of storms, you're with us, that you promise to be with us in the midst of the storm. And we pray that for anyone that's experiencing a storm right now, we pray that they would know your peace and they'd know your comfort in this time. We pray for situations and circumstances to change. We pray for people to look up um, when, they're, when they're locked down and we, we pray that they would know you in the midst of the storm. Amen. And we're equally celebrating together because because one of the things that we know is that, that great things are happening in the midst of this time. So why don't you send in your praise reports as well? We would love to celebrate with you and join with you in celebrating the good things that are happening in this time as well. Um, if you've got kids, we would love your kids to be involved in Hills Kids. And so there's a link um, in the description for resources that you can you can take your kids and do Hills Kids together with them. Why don't you send a picture through, tag them on Instagram or on Facebook. We would love to, to see you doing Hills Kids with your kids. Um, we have been, we've been preparing our pamper packs to go out to frontline staff, particularly people that are working in care homes. And uh, you, can still, you can still help purchase one of those to be given to someone on our website. You can also buy our, our Lockdown Look Up t-shirts on there as well, where all the profits will be going to people that are in need in this time. So all you need to do is just head to hillschurch.co.uk slash look up and uh, you, can, you can see what's, you can see and you can partner with us in doing that. Thank you for your giving in this time. We can, we can, we, we can operate as a church because of your giving and we can, we can offer this online platform because of your giving. So if you would like to partner with us, if you would like to give to the Hills Church, you can do so in the link in the description as well. This Wednesday night, we're coming back at, on Instagram Live. Uh, I am excited, I'm back on Instagram Live with Andy, and we're gonna be talking about next week's message, which I'll be bringing, where we're gonna be looking, on, on, in this time where we're looking at lessons from lockdown, so last week we did relationships, today we're doing anxiety, next week we're doing all about our thought life. So I'm excited to be with you on Instagram Live this Wednesday night and to be with you next week as well. But for today, we've got Andy coming to speak to us. So over to Andy Gamble. Hi, welcome to the Hills Church, like Nathan has already said. Hey Church, it's so good that we're uh, able to continue to connect with each other here uh, at the Hills Church online. And also, it's so encouraging that we're able to connect with so many new faces as well. So, hey, you're welcome to the Hills Church uh, right now, wherever you're watching. It's so good that you've joined us. Hey, we're in a new selection of talks. Uh, we're taking lessons from Philippians 4. And uh, this is a guy called Paul who was literally in a lockdown. He's writing this letter from a place of prison. And uh, it gives us great hope that no matter uh, what season we're going in, uh, even though it's a lockdown scenario, that we can still look up to God. And uh, last week we talked about relationships. Today, we're gonna talk about anxiety. Uh, if you wanna turn in your Bibles or maybe um, just listen in, I'm gonna read from Philippians chapter four, uh, verses six and seven. This is what it says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hey, I'm just going to pray real quick before we get going. God, I thank you today that you know us. I thank that you're for us. I pray, God, that you would uh, encourage us right now in these few moments and God you maybe would speak to us as well. God that you would help us out. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Hey we just read uh, Philippians 4 chapter 6 and or Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 and it's an, they're incredible verses and this huge word dropped in the middle of them ang anxious anxiety 
Uh, it's a massive word in today's culture. In our nation alone, one in four people are on some type of journey with anxiety. One in six people are on some type of journey where they have passed uh, medical or professional help in the area of anxiety. So it's a huge conversation for so many people out there, uh, a huge conversation for so many different people in different shapes and different forms. And i hey, just going to say it straight up, hey, I'm not trying to be the psychologist here. I'm not trying to be the professional counsellor. But what I hope to do right now in these next few moments is give us a few practical helps and how we can uh, go on a journey in uh, helping and uh, essentially healing and restoring and fixing and journeying this whole thing of anxiety and what it really looks like. And hey, we look at that word um, anxious in Philippians chapter 4 and we actually we learn, we go back to the original meaning of it and fundamentally it means careful. Uh, what the really word means is it's to mean to be pulled apart. So your hopes are pulling you in one direction and your fears are pulling you in another direction. And I think just to say it off the bat, in that regard, maybe uh, anxious or anxiety isn't always a negative thing. I think you say the word anxiety and the first thing that comes to your head is negative thoughts, failure, um, certainly maybe not the most positive things. And in some regard, I just want to say this, that maybe can I suggest that anxiety isn't, or to be anxious isn't always a bad thing. To be careful, maybe, is the word we could use for it. Uh, maybe right now I'm in the, we've got a new quad bike for our kids, and uh, yes, our kids are one and three. And uh, the three-year-old is phenomenal, Mr. Judah. Uh, he drives that quad with caution. He knows where the brake is. Uh, but Ralphie is number one. Uh, he's one years old. And yes, Ralph can drive a quad. Uh, in fact, he's probably the better of the two. Uh, but he's crazy. Uh, so I'm praying right now that maybe Ralph would maybe be a little bit more anxious about his ability to drive a quad. Hey, it's not bad to be anxious at the side of a cliff, to be safe that you don't fall over. So it's not always a bad thing to be anxious. But hey, what does anxiety mean to you? When I say the word anxiety right now, what does it mean to you? And I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me, up until three years ago, that word really had no personal connection to me at all. As a matter of fact, I was probably a little bit ignorant to the word anxious, to the word anxiety. And honestly, almost felt uh, unknown to myself. I, feel I felt uh, probably bulletproof from that. I didn't think it was a thing in my life. I didn't think it was a thing that I ever thought about. I thought I was a fairly out there guy, uh, not scared and all of the above. And being honest, I thought anxious was a super, maybe a weird thing or anxiety or some of that. It, would, it just wasn't on my radar. Until three years ago, I'm on a flight home from Colorado and with my wife. And uh, in summary, I, I told her, hey, I'm having struggle breathing. And I, I found myself at the back of a plane on a nine hour flight, uh, lying on the floor, uh, took a massive panic attack and crazy never experienced anything like it nor do i want to again and um uh, honestly never had any probably feeling that could happen to me didn't understand it um came home to go on this journey of sleepless nights and um all to say hanging out in my bedroom at 4 a.m in the morning not able to breathe it was a little bit of a crazy journey hey some of you guys listening in probably don't know that's part of my story and some of my friends and family i've, I've honestly only started to talk about this um, in the last uh, weeks and months and um, I think th that I hope and pray that this uh, not only my story would help you but this message would also help you as well if you're on a journey of anxiety. So I went on this journey and uh, ultimately I had to come clean with it and some of the steps that I took I'm just going to share with us um, on this message if that's okay with you and the camera said that's fine so thank you so much camera. Um, I'm trying to have humour with the camera quite difficult so uh, anyway I hope you're laughing at me or maybe laughing with me this morning as I'm having a wee giggle here partly partly through my message but um, anxiety though is a huge word and I, I can totally appreciate um, the fact of it having control over your life and it crippling you but I'll jump back on that in a few moments when I'm going to give us some practical conversations or tips or, or things that I've learned and uh, I just want to say this I've got my iPad here some notes normal anxiety Anxiety is a normal human emotion. All people encounter normal anxiety. Normal anxiety means that we experience temporary anxiety as a result of stresses, dangers, impending deadlines, traumatic events, a major life crisis, etc. Examples for normal anxiety are, it's normal to feel anxious before, for, before an exam, a major exam. 
It's, also, it's normal to feel anxious before a sports event or it's normal to feel anxious before a job interview or maybe the thought of losing a job. It's normal to feel anxious when you are in the midst of a major life crisis. Hey, it's normal to feel anxious or anxiety if you happen to be a spectator of a dangerous situation. Then we talk about anxiety disorders. And in summary, anxiety disorders are different than normal anxiety. Anxiety disorders have a different degree of anxiety and are categorized by a prolonged and repeated experience. Anxiety becomes a condition when we stay in a state of anxiety beyond a normal anxiety experience and it begins to interfere with and disrupt everyday life and our activities. Examples could be generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety, separation anxiety, anxiety due to a medical condition. And just at the front of this conversation, here are a few examples of what the Bible does not cover when speaking about anxiety. Anxiety caused by digital overload. Anyone else thinking out there that we're on our phone too much and maybe even that could cause a little bit too much anxiety? Anxiety as a result of a medical condition. Anxiety as a result of trauma. Anxiety rooted in PTSD. So, kind of just to clarify, putting those things out there, and also to kind of say this, hey, we're not going to try and cover this whole conversation, because that would be naive of us, and nor am I trying to be the, the clinical psychologist or the professional in this area, but here's what I can tell you, I've journeyed this thing, I have went on a journey with anxiety, and honestly, it's one of the biggest challenges I've faced in, in my life, it was a difficult thing, but you know what, with God's help, and the help of my wife, some great friends, and some professional help, I am out the back of it. Hey, you know what, I may knock on this door, anxiety may knock on my door for the rest of my days, but, but God's help and different scenarios that I'm going to conversation out right now, uh, honestly, I'm out the back of it, and I honestly can't believe that it's gone. There was a season where I thought it was crippled, and if you're out there right now, and you're one of them people that's crippled, and you're like going, Andy, I cannot get rid of this thing, hey, we feel your thing, and hey, our text number is 7 3759 Three, two, one, and honestly, if you want to talk to us about it or we can help you, it'll be in the comments below our number. Shoot us a text. We'd love to maybe have a chat with you or any way we can. Hey, just like our prayer, we can do anything for you. Shoot us a message. We'd love to pray for you or we'd love to talk to you or point you in some directions. And for me, the, the directions look like this. You know, step one to, to your journey for, um, is the word recovery, is the word restoration, is the word healing, whatever that may look like. The, the step one for me and for you this is what it is. This is what I believe it is. You've got to admit it. You've got to face it head on. And in some ways, it could be seen as the word weakness. It's a weakness in your life. And here's the bottom line. Every single person out there, we all have weaknesses in our life. Just me? Camera, what about you? Seriously, every one of us have weaknesses. What's your weakness? I mean, what is a weakness in your life? A weak area. And the funny thing is about when we come to things like mental health, it's funny that people have no problem uh, medication with any area of their life. And the moment we touch this button of uh, our mental health, suddenly there is a stigma to it. And honestly, as a church pastor and as leader of the Hills Church, me and my wife, we want to crush that stigma and say, you know what, it's perfectly okay to have a weakness, to be a weak, have a weak area, in, including your mental health. But here's the bottom line. The step one is to admit it. For me, I had to come back. I had to come back to the bottom line, hanging out of the bedroom under at 4 a.m. and not talking to my wife about it and just putting it to bed wasn't going to heal my anxiety. The first step I had to do was go, you know what, I've got to admit this to myself. I've got to admit this before God. And then, you see, the, this next step is we've got to talk to God. But admitting our weakness is sometimes a quite challenging thing. And I, and I love what it says about this in the Bible, actually. We, we read in um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, uh, it's like verse 9 to 10. And this is what Paul says, For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, the first step is we've got to admit it. And the next step is, like Paul's teaching us in Philippians 4, chapter 6, he says to pray with petitions and thanksgiving and give your request to God. We've got to talk to God. You see, and this is the cool thing about it is, when you give God your weakness, 
He will give you his strength. We just read it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 and 10. You see, when we give God our weakness, he will give us his strength. It's an incredible thought. But the truth is it takes a brave person to be able to firstly admit their weaknesses to himself and firstly to give their weakness to God. For me, unbelievable, the amount of Christians I know that can pray for everyone else. They can pray for the nations, they can pray for sick people, and the last person they want to pray for, I wanted to pray for, was myself. I'm a great person at praying for people, I think on people all the time, but when I came to praying for myself, I struggled in that area. I realized that I could talk to God. See, I read Philippians chapter 4, and I said, you know what, do not be anxious, but pray about everything and petitions and give your request to God. I wasn't doing it. Hey, can I say to you, step two is you've got to talk to God. Hey, step three, like me, hanging out of my bedroom window at 4.30 a.m., not being able to breathe this thing. I'm not sure where you're at on the ladder of anxiety or if it's on your door at all. But here's the bottom line. You've got to talk to someone about it. You've got to find a trustworthy person and you've got to talk to them about it. You see, when we look at the word confession in the Bible, the original word really for confession is to vent. You see, God designed us for relationship. We learned that last week, and if you've missed that message, hey, why don't we jump on um, our website or our YouTube channel and catch up on the message. But God designed us to be in relationship, and he designed us to talk to him and talk to each other. Hey, you've got to talk to someone. Hey, our number is 0737 596931. If there's no one else in your world, you know what you do. You grab that phone this afternoon. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to pray for you. And we'd love to help you out in this journey. But you've got to find someone that you believe you can trust. And you've got to talk to them. Hey, I, I wasn't talking. I wasn't doing that thing I just said. I wasn't confessing. I wasn't venting. And I was hiding it from Victoria, my wife. And I wasn't talking to anyone about it. And honestly, it was going nowhere. And when I sat down and I had the conversation with Victoria. And she was like, what? I mean, I thought that was the thing in the plane. I mean, we went on this whole journey of going, turned out actually Victoria had more revelation than I really realized. Because actually you're not doing a really good job of hiding it. Because I thought no one knew, and in truth, Victoria really did know. She might not knew the extent of it, but it was, incredible. it was an incredible release that I got when I talked about it, when I vented. it. Because the truth is this, we learned just there now that it is emotions. It's normal human emotions. And compressed emotions of any kind, when compressed enough, has a reaction, and normally a negative reaction. Any type of compressed emotion never really has a good ending. For example, Cain killed his brother Abel in the Bible really early in Scripture. Do you know why? Compressed anger, compressed anger exploded in the death of his brother. Compressed emotion is not a good thing. Hey, we're reacting, we're snappy, we're, we're, this, we're this. It's often a result of compressed emotion. So hey, what do you need to talk about right now? Hey, maybe there's other weaknesses. Maybe this isn't just the conversation of anxiety. Hey, when we give our weakness to God, he gives us his strength. But when we give other people our weaknesses, we can gain their strength too. Accountability, isolation will kill you dead, but accountability will set you free. And honestly, the enemy wants you to be isolated. He wants you to be grounded. He wants you to not to talk. But God wants you to be accountable, and he wants you to be open, and he wants you to be transparent. He wants to help you, and he wants to get you out the other side. But here's the thing about it. God can help you. God can heal you. God can restore you today. Hey, what's your weakness, though? Would you give that to God right now? Would you pray about it? Would you do, before you talk to another person, would you go to God in prayer and ask for his help? Ask for his strength. Ask for his healing. Hey, would you take step two? Would you talk? To someone about it. Hey, I went on this whole journey then. Step three for me was, hey, you know what? We've got to take some advice and we've got to get some wise counsel. So for me, I went and saw some professional people about this. I went and I saw a counselor, an incredible counseling service that we use, uh, help me out the other side of it. Uh, I went on some journey and honestly, I am a new man today. Counseling was something that I thought was you had to be totally at the end of your thing. Counseling is a very, very good and wise thing because a huge part of counseling is actually it's a platform for us to vent and talk out our situations and our life scenario. So from a young person that grew up with a great upbringing, a phenomenal, a phenomenal childhood, I did not have past trauma. I did not have some stories that you might have. I grew up in an incredible place called Dunamana where three other people in the world know where it is, uh, a rural village, and uh, great upbringing, great up outstanding. And I couldn't understand why I was getting this stuff, but I got some professional help. And out the other side of that with medication, man, honestly, I'm a new man. I am not on medication today. I am not seeing a counselor today. Hey, I'll check in every now and again with the counselor. But honestly, God, God's help 
through me talking to someone, through getting some professional help advice, and then step four, getting some professional help, has helped me on my journey. Hey, there's four ingredients though that make anxiety happen. Fear, doubt, worry, and insecurities. Four ingredients of anxiety that make anxiety. Fear, doubt, worry, and insecurity. Those four things create an atmosphere for anxiety. And here's the thing, here's the key. I think if you go out right now and you're that person that's struggling with anxiety and you try to remove all four, it's not gonna work too well. But is there one of those things that you could try and eliminate today? Because I believe if you try and eliminate one of those things, psychology will tell you that anxiety will automatically start to go down the hill. What are you scared about? What are, what's your fear? What are you doubting? What are you worrying? What are your insecurities? Maybe even just this afternoon or this evening or after this conversation we're having, would you go to God with just one of those things? Start praying about it? Maybe ask God who you should talk to? And then maybe you should then seek some counsel, get some advice, some help? and see where it goes. Because I believe with God's help and some incredible people around you, you're gonna be blown away by how this anxiety is gonna disappear. Hey, I know there's people out there that are completely locked up and entrapped with this thing, and man, it is a crazy journey. We're praying for you, we're believing for God's healing and God's restoration in your health and in your life. But hey, here just before I close, maybe you're out there right now and you're not the person that struggles with anxiety at all. It's not even on your radar. Hey, you just have normal anxiety, like normal day life. But I want to encourage you, you can be that person that listens to someone. You can listen to them, you can love them, you can talk to them, and you can encourage them. Hey, because here's the thing about it is sometimes whenever people are going through this anxiety thing, man, we, they don't respond the best, they're not the best of behavior, they're not the best attitude. Hey, well, you know what, would you maybe grab the phone and Hey, ring them, check in with them, encourage them maybe to get a coffee, be there for them, listen to them, love them, and encourage them. Because isn't, it isn't it incredible that we also can help others? Because here's the thing about weakness that we just talked about a few moments ago. Maybe anxiety right now is a weakness to someone else, but we all have weaknesses. And that's be people that are not scared to talk about our weaknesses because here's the key. When we give God, when we give God our weakness, He gives us his strength. Hey, but you know what? Maybe someone can give you their weakness. Would you give them your strength? And then maybe there's other areas of weakness in your life. What do they look like? Maybe there's an addiction. Maybe there's something you're not getting right. Maybe there's, there's tons of areas in your life that you could be weak. You can too go on this step. You can too pray about it. You can too talk to someone about it. You can also get someone to give you some advice and get some help. I'm going to leave you with a verse as we close this message. It's John chapter 14 verse 27 and this is what it says. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Hey, I'm just going to pray if that's okay before we close. God, I thank you today that you, God, are good. I, pr I thank you, God, that you don't judge us. I thank you, God, that you are there for us. I thank you, God, that when we give you our weaknesses, God, you always give us your strength. God, I thank you that our strength comes from you. So I pray, God, for any person on this anxiety journey, if they are struggling right now, would you firstly go and help them? Give them courage to talk to you and someone else or go on this journey, God. I pray, heal them in your name. I pray for anyone else out there, God, that needs a touch uh, f from you, a healing power, God, a need in their life. Would you meet that in Jesus' name? Amen. Hey, thank you so much uh, for joining us for week two of Lessons from Lockdown. Uh, we're, in, we're, we're really enjoying the selection of talks. Lessons from Lockdown, Lockdown, Look Up. And hey, you know what? Maybe you're listening in the message and hey, you've never even questioned a journey with God. Hey, at the Hulls Church, we love to connect people, particularly for people that have never walked with God before. We'd love you to start your relationship with Him. Hey, hey maybe you're a person that's, you know what? You walked with God a while ago and you've walked away. Hey, we'd love you to reconnect that. We'd love to pray for you. So hey, would you drop us a message directly here at the Hulls Church or maybe text Victoria and I on that number that I just called out. It's in our comments. And we'd love to post you a starter pack. And in that starter pack is gonna be a prayer to help you start that journey with God, a Bible and some practical things just to help you on the journey with God. So we'd love to send you a starter pack. We send them out every week. We will post one to you uh, this week to your house. We'd love to do that. And we'd love you to start a relationship or reconnect a relationship with God as well.
Hey, thanks again for being with us at the Hills Church. Uh, we're so glad that you've uh, been with us. And hey, if you're watching this live, right now we jump over into our Facebook group. Uh, we're gonna have tea and coffee together. So if you wanna, if, uh, when this uh, live service ends, jump into our Facebook page. We've got a group there. Jump into that, we're gonna hang out with you, have tea and coffee, answer any questions, and uh, have some fun uh, for a little bit. So we'd love to see you there. Hey, thanks again for watching. God bless.